Right guys, today I want to talk to you about order book analysis and our RTAS system. It's going to take me slightly longer than 60 seconds, purely as I want you to understand it, not because it's actually that difficult. So firstly, let's cover off what is order book analysis. I'm sure you've seen me talk about it a lot. Well, um, let's start with a, a slightly older example. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Commitment of Traders report or the COT report. Essentially, this gives you a view on a weekly basis of the futures and options contracts traded by the various people in the market and where they are all positioned. So essentially, it will tell me where a bank or a commercial company is positioned in the market. Are they long or are they short? Um, for many years, people have been using this since the 70s or 80s, um, and it's been a really powerful tool for trading uh, not only currencies, but anything that's really traded on the Chicago uh Chicago pits. So any of your futures and options, you know, anything from your ham, lean ham hogs all the way through to your uh, oil, gas and your currencies. So as part of this report, um, there's various components, your commercials, your non-commercials, so you can track where banks are positioned and typically you will follow where the banks go. Uh, but there's also a part which is your speculators and these are your ordinary traders in theory albeit with relatively large accounts because they're placing large enough positions for the CFTC to be interested in and it tells you where they are positioned now statistics over the many years that this will be running it will tell you that on a long enough time frame speculators are around 40% accurate now that doesn't mean that they always lose money because you can still make a lot of money being 40% accurate but what it means is 40% of the time their trades or the direction that they're in will pay off 60% of the time it won't now essentially what order book analysis is taking this down to the next level COT report is obviously only for futures and options is only on a weekly basis what our order book analysis systems do for us is give us a real-time feed directly of various retail trader forex positions and this tells us exactly where they are in the market we're not limited by the size of the retail trader so this can be joe blogs with fifty dollars in an account trading micro lots or this can be some guy with a few hundred thousand obviously we scale it and it gives us a view of exactly what they're doing and where they're positioned now, as you may be aware, Forex isn't on an exchange like futures and options, so we can't go to the Chicago board and ask for this detail. So what we do is we pull all these various stats from the various areas and brokers that we have connections with in order to give us this data, and we provide a consolidated view of what that looks like. Now, uh, as it turns out, and I'm sure many of you know some of the old adages that goes around with this, uh, retail traders in Forex typically are less than 40% accurate and actually on the most part as well unlike the futures and options guys they tend to lose a lot of money so what we have here is essentially a view of exactly where retail traders are positioned in the market and we know for the most part they are positioned wrong and they will most likely lose money on their trades you can already starting to get a picture of exactly how powerful this system could be when used correctly so let's move on to the charts and let's start talking about how we can use this so firstly let me run through the chart I've put up here now I've used one of my standard charts so that you can see it this is what you'll get in the little fish FX analysis and when you see our work um, I'll run through some of the less interesting indicators for this one um, although obviously we use these in other systems and then I'll get on to the bottom two which are the key ones for you so firstly these grey lines surrounding my price these are ATR price boundaries this is another very interesting phenomenon with the uh, FX markets when you set these up correctly depending on your currency pair you'll find that long run average price will stay between these lines for about 80% of the time um, and that can obviously give you some very powerful strategies if you know that statistic on big risk event days uh, you can actually find out that price will try and break these and these will be the key levels that they'll break so if you know those two statistics you can actually build some nice strategies around them but they're ones for another day um, I also have these red and blue lines these are my weekly and monthly pivots so I'll just leave those off for now um, and this is one of our pivot indicators you guys can get and I also have these green and red arrows which is my um, pin bar detector so this is pointing out potential pin bar options for me 
Um, again, I'll leave that one on for now, but uh, nothing. Uh, I also have there our short run stochastic crossover system. So this is the one that I'm tracking for longs and shorts in the market. However, these bottom two indicators, these are the ones that we're really interested in. So let's go to the most important one, this green one down here. Uh, this gives me the percentage net long of a consolidated view of Forex retail traders. So essentially what this is telling me, this indicator is telling me the percentage of retail traders who are long on short. Now obviously this works by using consolidated positions um, and we can modify this in the back end through various ways but what we do is we parse out a very simple version of the indicator that we found most effective. So if I take this current reading, this 40.07, this means that 40% of retail traders are long in the market, i.e. they're buying, they're expecting price to rise. If I go back here to where it's about 60%, this means 60% are net long in the market and are expecting price to rise. So here this 40 would essentially say that retail traders are expecting price to drop because only 40% of them are long, 60% short. Here it's saying that they're expecting price to rise. Now actually if you look at this 60% here they potentially got it right but we can come on to exactly where you can get in and out. Um, the bottom indicator which I'll cover off in a bit this is essentially what our supercomputer Marvin parses for you and this is essentially giving you depending on the various currency because currencies have slightly different personalities um, as by as detect, um, as produced by the various people that actually uh, trade them but this is giving you a relative rate of change and a potential positioning for how you should be positioned in the market I'll come on to that one so let's take this green one to start with. If we know that uh, retail traders are less than 40% accurate and we know exactly where they're positioned, we can do some really basic strategies. And what I'll do is I'll scroll back in my chart so we can have a quick look. The most basic of these is when retail traders go net short, i.e. they're expecting price to go down, so the number is below 50, we go long. And when retail traders are expecting price to rise, i.e. the number is above 50, most of their positions are long, we go short. So if I just scroll back a little bit and we can have a play with this. So let's get a nice ruler marker up. So here we can see we switched above the 50 line. So that essentially means that we should be positioning net short. So if we just simply enter short, so where is it? Let's be conservative. Let's say it's probably around there. Have I drawn that one? No, there. And we get out here. So where's that? Roughly around here. So there's 176 pips for a very simple strategy. Let's check the next trade. So if we're around here, I can't get this ruler to draw. There we go. And so we've now gone net long. And we'll come up here. So this one we've probably lost on. Or oh, it might just be break even there. So let's take that one. Oh, there you go. 10 pips, roughly. I mean, that would depend on how well you got in and out. We've taken a small short. I'm not going to draw that one on, but that one's obviously a little loser. And then here, we're going long. And oh dear, look at this. Retail traders are... Here. So actually, on this one here, it's obviously a small gain. Yeah, it's about there. For only 100 pips, but actually, as you can see, if you were trailing your stops up on this one, I mean, you could have bagged a large amount there. And this is where you'll start to see the bottom yellow line below where this one was looking to exit, as opposed to where the other systems were looking to exit. However, you can see from that, if you can continue doing that, you end up with a nicely profitable strategy and you end up with a nicely profitable strategy on all currencies so if you were looking to do this across the whole board you could actually get a good view so let's come on to what we use a lot which is our what we affectionately refer to as our RTAS system um, 
this is essentially what we're doing in this below piece is we're actually using the characteristics of the currency pair to determine a relative rate of change. Now I don't want to go into the technicalities of all that for you, but essentially what Marvin's doing is he's taking all of his data, he's looking at how the currency pair typically reacts to changes in order books, and he's providing a view of whether the relative rate of change is up or down. So up is below one, zero, above zero, sorry and rate of change down is below zero and because we're doing a contrarian view anything above zero you should be short anything below zero you should be long and essentially this is just based on the pro providing on the retail order book now essentially you guys could do this yourself and essentially the key concept is I would be drawing trend lines so I'm essentially saying that this trend here is down so I should be looking for longs. If I took the other way I would be saying this trend here is up and therefore I should be looking for shorts. Now when you look at a chart like this you can obviously pick some turning points and you can see obviously in hindsight it's much more difficult so if I just go one bar at a time here we can see we've been in a downtrend which has been providing us this nice push higher and where does that really turn? Well, we get to a nice dip here, and you'll find the extremes in the order books tend to lead to corrections. So we could potentially start looking at going short here, or at least closing longs or moving stops up. And then we start to get this upward trend. So this is where you'd really start to think about: could we be going long? Uh, could we be going short? Sorry, as we get this upward trend, as it continues, then you get some more confirmation and the trend goes lower. So you can do it just by looking at the charts. Essentially what we try and do is make things as easy as possible for you. So let's scroll back on this one and let's just run through a few of these and we'll try and cover this dip as well. So ruler again here above zero so we're essentially looking short. Set that candle close. And again I've missed it. And we're closing here. So we've lost a little bit on that one. We've lost 18 pips. We then have a very instant reversal, which in all reality you might not have actually even got into, but you would have gone long for and it's at the close. So let's even say, let's give a worst case scenario here. So there's minus 127. So we're minus 150 in pocket. take the next trade. I mean realistically if you're looking on that and you manage to get those two trades I'd be mightily impressed because you'd have to be super quiet. Um, we're above so we're going short and we're short to down here. So what's that? There you go we've made back our loss already. Then we go long. Apologies this is rough. Oh, blimey, sorry. And then we're going long, and you can see we're long all the way through this. We're still long, we're still long. There, this is where we cross. So you go 367 pips. We then go short. Again, sorry, not immensely accurate, but. And we're short to. So we're short, worst case, to here. So we still made 123 pips. I think, as you can imagine, if your trailing stops down, actually this was a major risk event, you could have closed that trade yourself. And currently, we're long. And we're long to here. So far, so far that's another 98 pips. Actually, I know that the system's entered down here at 130.10. So actually if you take the very bar close, I think it's down here we're actually long from. So it's slightly better than what I've suggested there. But as you can see, very simple system to follow. 
it's literally if you've got a reading below zero you're going long a reading above zero you're going short and it gives you some really good returns I think so far in 2013 our moderately risky portfolio is up well over 100 percent we're close to nearly 200 percent now our standard risk portfolio is still up 100 percent as well um, and this is generating a pretty steady amount of money placing a trade once every 10 days and this is just on euro dollar so as soon as you start to consider the other currency pairs as well you can imagine how uh, how well it works so hopefully that's given you a good idea of some of the order book systems and analysis and what we're talking about I've given you a couple of examples of some very simple trade ideas or even you could plot the trend lines yourself and look for extremes for potential reversals and again as you can imagine with all these, these are very simple systems that I'm showing you. However, start using this with some candlestick analysis, start using this with your own trailing stops, and you can actually get far better results than what we're generating. So if you already have a, a nicely profitable system by just going long and short when it tells you to, applying some of that knowledge, looking at the key risk events on the economic calendar, applying a good risk reward strategy, where are your stop losses going to be, you're going to move them lower with swing highs, if you're short or you're going to move them up with swing lows if you're long if you apply some of that logic you can get an even better system you know and even some of the simple things for instance stochastic crossover that we have highlighted here using this only in the direction of the order book will play out quite nicely using some of these considerations gives you some really good options for further trading and it's quite a unique way of viewing order book analysis it can become an extremely powerful tool right guys I think that's enough from me um, if you've got any questions come join us in the live trading room you can actually get in there as a guest you don't have to be a member to get into the room you can ask us questions on normally around if not drop us an email you can either send it to support at littlefishfx.com or admin at littlefishfx.com someone will get back to you to talk it through with you and uh, hopefully we'll see a few more of you on some of the webinars that we're going to do soon about going through order book analysis in more detail. Okay, that's it for me for now. Cheers.